Dramatic? Yes. Delicious? You bet. Hi, I'm Kathy Thomas, and cooking on Poppy Yote creates dishes that dazzle. And they're easy to prepare and perfect for post-pandemic dinners at home with friends. It's classic French technique that bakes ingredients sealed in a parchment paper pouch. Let's start with the sauce. We need to seed and chop the tomato. So I'm just gonna take out the core, slanting my knife towards the center. So now the tomato gets cut in half through the equator and squeezed over a bowl. And I like to go back and with my impeccably clean hands, make sure all the seeds and the juice goes in to my bowl. And what do I do with this mixture in the bowl? Well, if you strain this out, it's absolutely delicious. And you can put it in soups. My favorite is in a small glass with a lot of ice and a little vodka. So we're not going to throw that away. I'm going to do a rough chop on these tomatoes. It would be customary in a French kitchen to peel the tomatoes. But I've made it both ways and haven't had any complaints. So I leave the peel on. Time for the shallot. And you know, I love these French, I call them torpedo shallots, because they're big and easy to cut and easy to peel. So you want to cut at the root end, shallow enough so it stays together, and then cut it in half. And get rid of the peel. Look at how beautiful that is and how easy that peels. I'm just cutting towards the root end and then coming back with my knife and making up and down cuts. Mushrooms, these are cremini. When they grow up, they get to be portobellos, but when they're small, they're cremini. And those have been thinly sliced. I'm gonna turn the heat on medium high. I've got three tablespoons of butter. And go the shallots. And go the tomatoes, and go the mushrooms. We're gonna cook this until those mushrooms get a little soft and release any liquid. Okay, I see a little bit of liquid here, but that's fine. My mushrooms are softened. I'm gonna go ahead and add all-purpose flour, and I'm gonna be very careful to cook this long enough to get rid of that raw flour taste. In goes about a third of a cup of nice dry white wine and cook this until all of the wine cooks away. Now, a cup of heavy whipping cream. And I'm just gonna cook this until it starts to thicken up. Now, for entertaining at home, you can make the sauce in advance and cool it off completely. Put your packets together, put them in the refrigerator, three or four hours ahead of time. Let's add some salt and some pepper. Now, what kind of pepper are you gonna use? Julie would say you need to use white pepper. But you know what? I love the flavor of black pepper, so I'm gonna put some black pepper in. And off goes the heat. Let this sit for at least five minutes or so before you put your packets together. So I'm gonna add some nice fresh herbs. I've got a whole bunch of Italian parsley that I've chopped, some fresh basil leaves. You can see that it's quite thick at this point, which is what we want. Now the fish, no skin, no bones. You want delicate to medium firmness. So bass, halibut, lean cod, snapper, all good. I'm gonna use halibut today. I'm gonna to put it on a paper towel and just pat it dry. Now some coarse salt, some pepper. We want six sheets of parchment paper, one sheet at a time. We're gonna build this right next to where we folded it in half. So, couple of tablespoons of sauce. Fish goes on top. About three tablespoons on top. We've got a little egg white over here and a little brush. 
I'm just going to brush the edge of the bottom half of the sheet, bring it over, and seal it. Now comes the tuck and roll part. I fold it into a triangle, and then I just keep tucking and rolling, and with my right hand, I'm tucking and rolling, and with my left hand, I'm pushing it down. When you get to the end, you just twist it and tuck it under. And this goes on a baking sheet. And you want to arrange them so they're not on top of each other, but that the fish part of the packet is making contact with the sheet pan. This is going to go into a 375 degree preheated oven in the middle. Now, how long? Mm, 12 minutes if you're using something really delicate like a, a thin piece of a bass. More for this halibut. I'm gonna do this for 15 minutes. You only have a minute because it starts to deflate. But isn't it gorgeous when it comes out? Now I take them to the table just like this. I'm gonna make a tiny little hole. Let just a little steam out so that nobody burns themselves. And then the unveiling. Is that beautiful or what? Here's a quick tip from Melissa's. I'm a big fan of cherry tomatoes. Often they're the tastiest tomatoes in the marketplace or in the garden. Cherry tomatoes are the centerpiece of this pasta dish, showcasing the delicious orbs in a herbaceous and colorful sauce. I've got a good quality of boiling salted water. I'm going to add some gemelli pasta. And I want to cook this a little under, under al dente. So usually I cook it about 13 minutes. I'm going to set the timer for 12 minutes. We want to really flavor this up with a nice quantity of garlic. I've seen people struggle to get these garlic cloves separated, and it's really easy. All you need is the head of garlic, and a Ziploc bag. Easy. I apply just enough pressure to separate those cloves and not to smash them. So now I want to peel and chop them. So I'm just going to use the flat side of the knife to loosen that papery skin. Now a good smash with the side. And as I smash, I move it away. And it's already partially minced at this point. I want some olive oil in a heated skillet. In goes the garlic. A little salt and a little pepper. Just a little bit of dried red pepper flakes. I'm gonna cook that for about a minute or two. The garlic is starting to soften, so I'm going to go ahead and add my cherry tomatoes. Now, some of these cherry tomatoes were large, and I cut those in half, but the smaller ones, I leave whole. Get them in a single layer for about eight minutes. And what I'm looking for is them to start to shrivel and um, get a little bit of brownness in some areas. Our tomatoes look gorgeous. I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of butter, some green onions, and I'm slicing them thin. Okay, our pasta's ready. I'm gonna drain off about a half a cup of that cooking water to help make my sauce saucy. In goes the pasta, and you can see it looks a little dry. So this is where that cooking water comes in. A little bit more onion at this point. We also want about two cups of fresh herbs. Now this can be basil or it could be mint. And 
some pecorino cheese. Pecorino cheese is more flavorful even than Parmigiano. Just a little tiny splash of olive oil, a little bit of flaky salt, and it's ready for a fork. How easy. The produce aisles are filled with so many delicious choices. Try something new, have an adventure.